This little box is part of a billion dollar network no one uses. It's called a helium miner and I was gifted it by a friend who told me that it would pay me every day just to sit on a shelf. How? Radio waves, magical thinking, I honestly didn't care. It was free for me because it was a gift. I'm heavily in debt from the $10 million studio, obviously. And so I had nothing to lose. And fast forward four months, we finally have the results and they aren't great. I've made $22 with this little thing, which is a 20th of the cost of the actual machine. It retails for about $400, which means if I had paid for it, I'd break even in about six years. But even worse, the daily rewards of the helium miner have been falling fast, partly because of the discovery that most of the revenue of this network come from other miners buying more miners. And finally, it looks like it's collapsing with users complaining very loudly on Reddit and things just look really bad. And today I wanna to tell the story of how that happened, how this little company, Helium, grew a billion dollar organization building a network no one uses. Helium was a company that originally started without the idea for a crypto coin. It was first a company trying to help build the internet of things. You guys have all heard that buzzword before, right? Internet of things or IOT. It's basically the trend of putting Bluetooth in your toothbrush, radio sockets in your socks, basically, connecting everything with the internet, even things you wouldn't expect, like this ring on my finger right here. Right now, it's selling health data to some overpaid pharma rep as we speak. That's IoT. And the point is, if you're gonna connect everything to the internet, these IoT devices, which are much smaller usually, have different needs than something like, I don't know, your phone. You don't need to transmit large amounts of data. You're dealing with tiny batteries and you need these devices to work over long distances, which is why Helium uses a special frequency range called LoRaWAN also known by its much catchier name, LongFi. And you don't need to fully understand LongFi to just know that Helium set out to kind of catch this wave of Internet of Things devices. But as they set out to build this network, there was a big problem because how can you afford to build a huge network without people paying for it first? And on the other hand, how do you get people to pay for you to build a network without building it first? It's a classic chicken or egg problem. And Helium struggled with this until they found out about crypto and devised a way to do both at the same time. They did this by creating a crypto token called Helium Network Token, or HNT. It works in two ways. On the one hand, it rewards people who set up hotspots, that's on the supply side. And on the other hand, if you wanna use the network, you buy HNT and spend it on the demand side for data credits, which is simply a tiny packet of data. And the idea was early adopters who set up little hotspots like this would make lots of HNT, which in the future would be valuable as more and more people needed to buy these data credits. It all sounds pretty good, right? So what's the catch? Well, for a long time, this really was the rocket fuel that propelled the Helium network. And it was pointed to as a real use case of crypto. I'm sure you've heard before, like, what do we actually use crypto for? Well, oftentimes people would point to Helium network as a great example of real world use cases of crypto because a single crypto coin was bootstrapping an entire wireless network, no small feat. And for a while, things were going great. Hundreds of thousands of regular people were setting up and spreading the word of wireless hotspots. And of course, passive income. This is the best way to make passive income. Passive income. Passive income. And I can't stress enough how much of the adoption of these helium miners were due to thoughts about getting rich and passive income. And initially, payouts were eye-watering. It was a lot of money. Some miners were making hundreds of dollars, if not $1,000 a month, just from one miner. And if you consider that each of these cost about $400, it wasn't hard to see why many people quickly ordered more and then more, because they're literally little money printing machines. And demand for these machines grew so fast that it actually became impossible to order them for a while. They were just out of stock. People even joined wait lists that were over six months long for these things. But eventually these supply issues were able to be worked out and the supply of these little guys exploded. Just in the year of 2021, they started the year with 14,000 of these hotspots deployed and they grew that to 450,000 in one year. That's over 3,000 hotspots a day. Right now, they have 900,000 hotspots, which by anyone's standard is impressive. However, behind the scenes, trouble was brewing. The first sign of trouble is when Helium started to reach a saturation point in the market for hotspots. Basically, Helium operates on a grid system where you're incentivized to provide coverage in high usage areas, but if you have too many people around you, it hurts your profits. So in an area like this, it really isn't profitable. 
This made it so that more and more people were competing for increasingly smaller shares of profit as the Helium network exploded. And that might have been okay if on the demand side, Helium had been seeing increasing adoption. You know, selling the actual product of connecting the Internet of Things. But unfortunately, that's not what was happening. By looking at the data that the Helium network themselves provide, we see absolutely abysmal rates of adoption. Remember that in 2021, the number of hotspots went absolutely parabolic, as you can see here. And one would hope that usage would follow. But looking at the data credits used, we see a different story. Now, I'm going to have to explain what this chart means, but basically, this is the entire revenue of the network, the data credit usage. But not every part of this chart represents actual demand for Helium, because there are several ways you would use data credits in Helium. For example, it costs $10 in data credits, for example, just to set up one of these mining hotspots. But that isn't actually someone connecting an Internet of Things device. And the same is true if you want to change the location of this device. It costs another $10. You can also be charged fees for using the network. And there are all these proofs about like if your hotspot is where you say it is. But none of this is actually the system doing what it's designed to do, which is connect these devices. Instead, that category of data credit usage belongs to the data transfer category. This you can see in yellow. And if we take a close look at this chart again, you can hardly see the actual usage of the network in comparison with all the insane amounts of data credits burned for everything else. This means a few things. Actual demand for this network is almost non-existent. Literally in June of this year, it was reported that the actual demand revenue for Helium was only $6,500. This was reported by the generalist and it's hardly enough money to justify a $1 billion valuation. Now, the CEO of Helium, Amir Halim, responded to these accusations, arguing that while the numbers are true, they weren't fair because the total revenue of the network is insanely high, $54 million over its lifetime. But I think he's confusing things here because we all know that the Helium network is being used a lot. The problem is who's using it. This whole adoption scenario by real people we've been promised isn't happening. Instead, it's all the miners who are using the network of other miners. For example, in the last 30 days, you could argue Helium made $1.8 million in network fees, but the actual demand side of these fees was only $2,000, meaning 0.1% of the network revenue is from actual Internet of Things usage, which is just horrible. And understanding this starts to make sense of why miners were actually making so much money early on. It wasn't because people were actually using the network. It's because other miners were onboarding thousands of new hotspots a day and paying tons of fees. It was sort of like a Ponzi-like system where old investors were paid from new investors. And once the market got saturated, it was all doomed to fall apart. And many of the investors who got involved for those passive income dreams are now left with expensive plastic boxes that may never pay off. That's, of course, assuming this long fi dream doesn't work out, because some optimists will argue that the reason long fi hasn't been adopted yet is because no one was building products for long fi when it wasn't a thing. Now that it's a thing, people are going to build the products and adoption is going to grow in the next five years. That's their argument. But I have to say I'm a bit skeptical given the unit economics of helium, because think about it. On the one hand, their pitch is that their data is way cheaper, 360 times cheaper, according to their CEO. On the other hand, the amount of data Helium wants to sell you is by design tiny because of the frequency band. So you're selling a tiny product and you're selling it 360 times cheaper. How do you become profitable with that? You have to be servicing absolutely massive numbers of devices. And I'm just not convinced that's going to happen because I already own plenty of Internet of Things devices, and most of them just use Bluetooth or 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. I don't need long -fi. And I guess this all begs the question, how, if this data was sort of always public, did we miss this for so long? How did Helium manage to convince so many people that they were on the cusp of being successful? Well, it's on this front that it turns out the Helium team may have been misleading customers because for a long time, Helium advocates would point to key partnerships as a sign of real world use right around the corner. They advertised two really important companies in particular, Lime and Salesforce, both recognizable and large brands. 
However, it was recently reported to Mashable that these partnerships weren't really real at all. The scooter company Lime says they only tested the product three years ago, and part of the condition was that they couldn't use their name for promotional material because it wasn't a real partnership, it was like a trial. And according to The Verge, Salesforce also wasn't in a real partnership with Helium. They say, quote, Helium is not a Salesforce partner and that they don't use the technology. So, oops. Now, once again, I have to tell you that Helium responded to this and said it's all a misunderstanding and they just made a mistake. But on this front, I'm not going to give them the benefit of the doubt. I think it's far too convenient that they were able to use these large brands to make themselves look good. And I ultimately, I just think they're upset they got caught. Now with that, you're sort of caught up to speed with Helium as of now. And the question of course is, now what? They're obviously in trouble. They have a huge network with hardly any real customers, but they do have a lot of loyal miners. So what's next for them? They're pivoting. They wanna move into another network category with potentially more adoption, that is 5G. And like last time, they want this to be rolled out by their faithful investors who built their first big network. The catch, of course, is that you can't use your old device for 5G. You need to buy a new device and it's much more expensive, like five times more expensive. And from here, it kind of gets complicated. They set up some sub DAOs. They created a new token to represent this. But even so, it seems like there are people willing to go along with this ride too, because already 2,000 5G hotspots have been set up in 47 states. It's pretty shocking given how bad their rewards are right now that people are just dumping more money into their new project. But either way, I think more than anything, this shows how good crypto is at getting buyers before demonstrating real demand for a product. It shows how people ignore actual fundamental value when faced with the enticing opportunity of passive income. And it also shows how much early adopters just wanna see those 100X gains that may or may not come. We may never know for years whether Helium's plan to bootstrap a wireless network from scratch will have worked. But what we do know is they certainly aren't the ones who paid for it. And to be fair, neither am I. I didn't pay for this thing, so in a way, I'm not too upset. I'll probably go plug it back in and uh, make my pennies until either I'm a millionaire or it stops being worth the electricity that it uses. But for those of you thinking of jumping in, investing in Helium and these crypto schemes that are gonna change the world, this is a really cautionary tale. Just because you build it doesn't necessarily mean customers will come.